A heavy gate blocks the way to the winding road. Far in the distance, you can see a majestic castle. Welcome to Mordavia. It's nice to have some fresh blood around here. We so seldom see strangers. This heavy gate blocks access to the castle road. The gate makes you wait. Two tall towers support the castle gate and block any other path to the road. Far in the distance, you can see a grim but majestic castle. The road winds its way perilously across the treacherous gorge. A tall oak tree spreads its branches across the cliff edge. The gatekeeper is a gaunt, tired-looking man with deep-set eyes that stare intelligently at you. It is so difficult to get past the swamp which blocks the pass to and from the valley. We haven't had a stranger here since the rains created the swamp several years ago. You've obviously done quite a lot for one person. It will be interesting to see what you do around here. I am Boris Stelvich. This is the castle of the Boyars, the title of the rulers of Mordavia. It once belonged to the Borgov family for generations, but the last Borgov has been dead for many, many years. Mordavia is the name of this valley and of the town. Even the inn is called the Hotel Mordavia. The name means Dark Valley. The heads of the Borgov family were the boyars of Mordavia for ages. The last Borgov disappeared at the time of darkness. No one knows what became of him. It is bad luck to even speak of the time of darkness. Mordavia was a safe and lovely land before that time. Much has changed since then, and for the worse. Boyars are rather like barons of other lands. They own the castle and protect everyone within their domain. The heads of the Borgov family were the boyars of Mordavia for ages. The last Borgov disappeared at the time of darkness. No one knows what became of him. I'm not certain who all lives in the castle. I so seldom see anyone from there. There's the master, of course. Then there's the strange foreigner. There's also the master's daughter, I believe, and some rather strange guards. Beyond that, I really can't say. I haven't actually seen the daughter, but I know the master is quite proud of her. The master desires privacy, and I respect that wish. As I always say, <clears throat> the will of the master is the shell of the servant. <laughs> I wrote that. He is an unpleasant sort, with a short beard and moustache, and a funny hat. He is rude when giving orders, and he has the habit of staring at a person and licking his lips. Most unsavory. I have only caught glimpses of them occasionally, but I don't think they are quite human. No matter. If a man does a good job, then whether he is a man does not matter. I am the gatekeeper of Borgov Castle. Is it not true that he who guards the gates 
is the Keystone Speaker? This is the gate to Borgov Castle. You can see it in the distance behind here. I am here to make certain that only welcome guests may enter through here in the daytime. At night, this gate is guarded by huge necrotors who make certain no one tries to enter without permission. The town of Mordavia is to the east of here. Turn to the east as you leave and continue until your way is blocked by rocks. Then turn north and you will find the gates of the town. Farewell, and may you find whatever you seek. Goodbye, young man. May the fireplace be warm and the drink cold at your journey's end. The majestic mountains in the background provide a beautiful contrast to the grim gravestones and crypts of the cemetery. The inscription on this headstone reads, Michael Med bumped his head in another man's bed. Now he's dead. Rest in peace. Arkin Tenor walked at night. Arkin saw his final sight. Now the question seems to be, what in the world did Tenor see? Here lies the body of Carrie Nation, who answered a vampire's invitation. Now this cause for lamentation, it was a fatal recreation. Here lies the spirit of Barney Blue. To his lover was untrue. So she knew just what to do. Fixed herself some Barney stew. This headstone reads, On a dare, Pasha Sperry spent the night in the cemetery. Something gave him such a fright that now he sleeps here every night. Two spare coffins await their customers here. Apparently Igor has finally managed to get ahead of business. A fresh grave has recently been opened here. This gravestone is marked no effort could Elissa save. She passed into a watery grave. Her body was lost. Only her memory remains. Here lies Janos, faithful forever to his lost true love, laid beside her empty grave. An inscription on the door says, House of Lygia Po. May she rest forever. Great Scott, that rotting corpse sure gave you a fright. Fortunately, it was just a dead body, not some sort of horrible undead creature. Those only come out at night.
Large deciduous trees make their stand among the pines. They know how to leaf well enough alone in the fall. You have come to a beautiful garden deep within the forest. A stream flows gently in a loop around the central island. Feelings of peace and harmony permeate the area. The fruit tree is laden with luscious looking fruits of many kinds. It must be one of the rare mixed fruit trees. A soft, magical aura permeates the entire garden. Strong magic emanates from the fruit tree and the center of the pool in the stream. The lanterns are also magical. You have come to a beautiful garden deep within the forest. Tulip is closed. Your spell cannot reach inside. You capture the scroll with your fetch spell. As you read the scroll, Knowledge of how to cast a protection spell enters your mind, then the scroll vanishes. Protection is a sort of magical shield which will help guard you from physical attacks. As you approach the tree, the fruit vanishes. Must be that low calorie kind. Someone has dug a large hole there, perhaps removing a bush or a small tree.
cute, innocent, well, maybe not exactly, little bunny has been viciously slaughtered and now looks like a roadkill. There is absolutely nothing in the little rabbit's fanny pack. Well, maybe a pocket watch, but you don't need one of those. Hello there. Could you help me? This water is so cold and I need someone to help warm me. You stand on the shores of a vast and beautiful mountain lake. To the north and east lies the pine forest. To the south, the lake drains into a dark and dismal swamp. The lake stretches out to the west as far as your eyes can see. Its crystal clear waters are probably icy cold from the mountain runoff. This is one of the most beautiful women you've ever seen. She has lovely, long, golden green hair, although your eyesight tends to focus a bit lower than that. Why don't you come to my arms so that I can give you a real greeting? I am the Rizalka. Please, take my hand and help me. If you take my hand, I'll be happy to show you what the lake is like. If you take my arms, I'll be happy to talk to you about anything you'd like. You ask what a nice girl like her is doing in a place like this. It's so nice here in the water. Why don't you join me? Please, don't leave me here so alone and cold. I need you. You unlock the door to your room and go in. The furnishings are sparse, but the bed isn't bad and the room seems pretty clean. This large chest is a good place to store equipment you don't need to carry around with you. The bed is adequate, but nothing to take home with you. After you leave, they'll probably put a plaque on it reading something like Hero slept here. Assuming that is that you leave in one piece and with your throat intact. Not necessarily a good assumption. After some rest you feel better. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is a bas relief of a strange creature. It looks like an octopus with only six tentacles. You have a creepy feeling as if it is looking right back at you. The hectopus seems somehow calmer as you present the dark one sign to it. You get the feeling that there's something it wants you to do with the sign. Bad place. <laughs> very bad place. Go away. You'll be very sorry. You push the dark one sign into the indentation on the door. It fits. Perfectly. There's an old threadbare rug on the floor. Like the curtains, it looks more like a fire hazard than an amenity at this point. Here, two bones have been crossed as on a pirate flag. This carving depicts a cavernous, hungry-looking mouth. This relief depicts a single, huge drop of blood. This relief shows a storm cloud, evidently representing the concept of breath. This is a bas-relief image of a heart. If you look out of the corners of your eyes, you can almost see it pulse. This place is making you see all sorts of things, actually. This is a no longer used monastery. The furnishings are in poor condition, and the carpet and drapes are faded and threadbare. The symbols of the Dark One make this an uncomfortable place to be. This is a fairly attractive, in a Baroque way, display cabinet with a glass door. This amazingly lifelike sculpture looks like a cross between a baby troll and a hermit or dervish. It fits the description of a domovoi, except that it's totally dried out and unmoving. A long wooden table attests to a time when this room was used to double as a communal dining room for the monks. It's a six-tentacled, octopus-like creature. I guess you'd call it a hexapod. Unless you like cats, then you might call it a hexapus. You sense a low level of magic all around you, as if many arcane and unpleasant activities had occurred here in the past. The hexapodal wall decoration above the fireplace is actually an enchanted creature and extremely powerful magic radiates from an object in the display case. Hector the Hexapod happily gorges itself on the garlic. Hector looks much less hungry and perhaps a little less dangerous now. This is an antique brass log holder. There doesn't seem to be anything special about this one. You can't get this log holder to move at all. It's solidly set into the base of the fireplace. There is a cold feeling down here that chills your bones and sets the hairs on the nape of your neck on end. There is a musty odor of mold and mildew mingling with the sickeningly sweet smell of decaying flesh. Welcome to your nightmare. You've seen some pretty ridiculous things in your time and that's certainly one of them. The roll top desk is spotted with dark and ominous stains. This place practically vibrates with dark magic. You get a momentary vision of nameless rites and unspeakable rituals before the spell cuts off. 
Any individual magical impressions are lost among the overall dark magical aura. This is not a good place to practice your magic. A swirling cloud of undoubtedly poisonous gas surrounds the desk for a few seconds after your spell opens it. Then the cloud subsides. You rifle through the Mad Monk's desk and find the diary of Amon Tilado. Boy, was this guy wacko. Reading this makes your head hurt. However, it does give you some information about the Dark One rituals. It said something about the first ritual being placed within the Mad Monk's tombstone, there to be forever guarded by followers. The second ritual shall be placed in the Stone of Squids and revealed only by the light of a dead child's soul. The next ritual shall be placed in the hollow of the hangman's tree and guarded by the spirit of the dead which remains there. The blood ritual shall be concealed magically within the monastery, and only he who willingly seeks dark visions shall find it. The mouth ritual shall be placed in the great arch itself, under the Dark One's sign. And the heart ritual shall be given to someone named Gregor for safekeeping. Now, there's another note on this page in another's handwriting. Gregor is missing in the forest and probably dead. Yet where is the heart ritual? You've seen some pretty ridiculous things in your time, and that's certainly one of them. Above the altar, is the sign of the Dark One, surrounded by arcane letters. A notch next to the A makes you think that perhaps that is some sort of starting point for the letters. The huge barrel is labelled Cask of Amontillado. This must be the fabled spirit that provided most of the income and fame of the monastic order here. It is rumored to provide strange and mystical visions to those who taste freely of its contents. You tap the huge cask of Amontillado. This is the strongest stuff you've ever tasted, assuming that you're not an aficionado of Dragon's Breath. Bottoms up! got a headache. Fortunately, the Dark One rising seems to have been just a vision, not the reality, yet. A scroll has formed from the cask's wine droplets. You pick up the rolled paper on the floor. It has a symbol of a drop of blood at the top and the inscription, Ritual of Blood. You can't read any of the other writing on it. You retrieve the Dark One sign from the monastery door, then quickly step away before the Hectopus can react.
you again. Heard anything interesting lately? So, you haven't been eaten yet. <laughs> we'll see how long you last traipsing about everywhere when you should be staying in this nice, safe town. Good night, and don't let the bed bugs bite, as my husband used to say. You get a fine meal of roast duckling a la garlic. You pick at your plate in search of any leftover garlic. I do not gossip. I know little of the forest. For I seldom leave my inn. Um, you should speak with the Burgomeister. Perhaps he can tell you more about it. I am well, as always. Besides the ones that come in here in the evening, there are quite a few others. You probably have met the shopkeeper, the gravedigger, and the Burgomeister. And then there's Nikolai. And that crazy Dr. Cranium. Ah, he is a harmless old man who wanders around looking for his dead wife. It must be a shame to grow old all alone. Dr. Cranium came to Mordavia several years before the swamp closed off the Pez. No one knows much about him, but no one trusts him. It is rumored that he conducts strange experiments. The shopkeeper knows everything that goes on in town. She also makes a delicious avocado and garlic sandwich, which she sells as rations. The Burgomeister keeps to himself and lives in his office. The gravedigger is a strange one though he is a good carver of tombstones and digger of graves. The castle was once that of the Boyar. Now we do not know who lives there. This inn used to do a steady business before this swamp prevented traders and tourists from coming. Now we mostly make our money off of food and drink. You unlock the door to your room and go in. After some rest you feel better. Unfortunately, After some rest, you feel better. After some rest, you feel better. You awaken as the sun begins to rise.